we're going to start here in, this, in the next uh, couple classes, finish up our discussion of cell processes, a discussion of cell division, specific type of cell division called mitosis. So, in organisms, cells need to um, reproduce through several reasons. So, to heal an injury to a multicellular organism, you need to replace damaged cells. You need new cells to be free. To grow in size, new cells are needed. So cells reproduce. And single cell organisms, cell reproduction results in your organism reproducing. So one type of cell division is called mitosis. It's what we'll be talking about today. So mitosis is um, cell division that's used to replace old cells, used for growth, used for asexual reproduction. And so it's important that cells reproduce and divide, but only when necessary, only when appropriate. And so cells have fairly complex methods that regulate when the cell divides. There are certain proteins called cyclins that help this happen. They're, they can respond to internal stimuli from within the cell that tell when the cell should divide, okay? when to go through different phases of mitosis. They also can respond to external factors, growth hormones, encourages cells to divide. Um, there's also this concept of contact inhibition. You take some cells in a culture on a petri dish and give them the right conditions and put a few cells. They will start to divide and they'll do so until they fill up the entire petri dish. But actually then once they do that, they stop dividing. That's called contact inhibition. That when the cells are touching other cells, they stop dividing. If you take those cells and scrape away some in the middle, they'll start to divide again. But then they'll stop once they fill in that gap. Because if cells divide when they shouldn't, that can lead to problems. And so the disease that we call cancer is a huge um, class of different um, types of cancer. But really, it's a disease of our own cells losing their control of cell division. So when our own cells start to divide and lose that, that check on their cell growth, they start to form clusters called tumors. Okay? And then they can spread to other parts of the body. Those tumors, those cells, interfere with the function of other cells okay? and lead to the um, health problems that they associate with different types of cancer. And so cancer is a disease of the cell cycle. So when cells divide and when they stop dividing, there are certain genes that can um, encourage cells to divide when they shouldn't. There are certain external factors like radiation, certain chemicals can interfere with the cell's ability to check their process of cell reproduction. So, Cells go through this process we call the cell cycle. It has different steps. So the phase we're talking about is this end phase. Okay, when the cell is going through a process of cell division called mitosis, which is basically making just identical copies of the cell. After mitosis, it goes through other stages where the cell grows in size. Because after mitosis, the cell is smaller about half the size it started with. So the cell can grow, can grow new organelles, replace those organelles. Eventually it gets to the S phase, when the DNA is replicated or copied, goes into another growth phase, and then it's ready to divide again. And along the way, there are certain checks to make sure everything is okay with the cell, that the DNA is intact, that the proper organelles are there. Because if the cell is not healthy, in the normal cell, this process should stop. 
Alright, so let's talk about mitosis. Mitosis is a type of cell reproduction that makes basically identical genetic copies of a cell. It maintains chromosome numbers. So a cell of an organism has a characteristic number of chromosomes. How many is it in humans? 20? No. 46. Normal human body cells have 46 chromosomes. 23 of them came from mother, 23 from the father. So 22 <laughs> pairs of chromosomes for 46 total. We call that, those cells that have pairs of chromosomes, diploid cells, abbreviated 2N. And so like I said, humans have a diploid number 46. And the only cells typically that have a different number are Reproductive cells, haploid cells. We abbreviate that with the abbreviation N. So in humans, a sperm cell or an egg cell has only 23 chromosomes, half of the number of the original. And so during fertilization, when they combine again, you're back up to the proper chromosome number, the diploid number of chromosomes. And these chromosomes are where our DNA is. Or DNA, which has a series of bases, A's, T's, G's, and C's, is wound around some protein, and that's what forms our chromosomes. So we have some, some terminology. So sometimes during the cell cycle, our chromosomes are kind of unwound. The DNA and that protein is just like that. Kind of like an unwound ball of spring. Sort of all spread out throughout the nucleus. Other times it winds up into these compact packages that we call chromosomes. And so those chromosomes are made up of the DNA along with the protein. And during that, um, during that S phase, when the DNA replicates, they get copied into two identical halves. The two identical halves are called sister chromosomes. So if you imagine a chromosome, imagine it looking like an X, like these shapes. Those are chromosomes, and each half of the X is identical. It was copied during that S phase of replication. As we follow the, the process of mitosis, we'll see eventually the two halves split apart from each other. So, just to give you an idea, humans, we've got a diploid number of 46. Other organisms have different numbers. Rhesus monkey is 28, horse 66. Cotton, the plant, has 52 chromosomes. Y has 12. But the number is really meaningless. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't indicate the complexity or intelligence or size of the um, organism. It's just a sort of a, a number that has evolved over time. So let's talk about the phases of how mitosis happens. What's going on in the cell as this process is happening? So these, so we're mostly going to talk about this mitosis phase. During all of these other parts, they're all together called interphase. It's sort of the in-between part. When the cell's not actively dividing, it's an interface. Now, resting, I don't know if that's the right term, because really it's growing in size, it's making new organelles. It's not just sitting there static. And in that S phase of interface, this is when the DNA replicates. If you're going to make identical copies of the cell, you have to copy the DNA. That part happens in interphase. When you look at cells in the microscope, in interphase, they kind of look like cells you've seen. Your, your cheek cells, when you looked at them in stamen, those are mostly cells that were in interphase. The nucleus just sort of stains dark because the DNA is all unwound in this chromatin. 
can't see individual chromosomes in interphase. These structures that are part of the cytoskeleton, the centrioles, okay, they're at right angles to each other, and they copy at some point during interphase as well. When a cell is going through this process and starts to go into the mitosis phase of the cell cycle, that's when things start to change. The first step of the mitosis phase is called prophase. Two things happen in prophase. In the nuclear membrane breaks apart and starts to sort of disappear. The nucleolus <laughs> disappears as well. The chromosomes condense. So that chromatin, that's that unwound DNA, starts to wind up into visible little packages called the chromatids. They start to become visible. Those centrioles start to migrate opposite ends, we call them poles, opposite ends of the cell. These fibers start to form, they're called spindle fibers. So here's an actual picture of a cell, so the compound microscope, and you can see there's no nuclear membrane anymore, visible, there's no nucleolus, the genetic material is condensed into these strands that we can actually see now. So that would be an example of a cell that's in prophase. After those chromosomes condense, what they do is they start to move to the middle of the cell. It's called the equator of the cell. And they kind of line up single file. These spindle fibers that we're forming attached to the chromosomes. This again, in the microscope, what we see, we see the dark stained chromosomes kind of all in the middle of the cell. That's a cell that's in metaphase. From there, we move into anaphase. In anaphase, Chromosomes start to get separated from each other. The two sister chromatids break apart from each other. They were connected here at the centromere, but after that centromere divides, they can now separate from each other. They start moving to opposite ends of the cell, and getting pulled apart. Here in this plant cell, the chromosomes are getting pulled apart from each other. Sister chromatids are separated. And eventually they get pulled all the way to opposite ends of the cell, to opposite poles. And now a new nucleus starts to form around each group of chromosomes. See that they've been pulled to opposite ends of the cell. They're starting to unwind there. And then the actual cell itself starts to split. That process is called cytokinesis. So what do, after this finishes, it goes a little bit longer, what are we going to end up with here? Two cells. How many chromosomes will be in each cell? Not in this, not in this example. No. Look at these cells. Four. Four. What did we start with? How many chromosomes? Four. What are we ending up with? 
four. We look at the colors to indicate. Okay, we got an orange, blue, red, and purple. Got the orange, blue, red, and purple there. Split apart. Orange, blue, red, and purple. And their final cells, same color. So we have identical genetic material at the end of this process. Just the cell. We started with a single parent cell. We end up with two what we call daughter cells. They have the same genetic material as the original parent cell. Now that final step of the cell actually splitting into two. Slide over here. It works differently in plant cells and animal cells. In animal cells, because they, their outermost layer is just a flexible cell membrane, they just sort of pinch in the middle into two cells, like was shown in the diagram. Well, plant cells can't really do that. What do plant cells have? So, that's cell wall. It's not flexible. You can't just pinch in the middle. So in plant cells after mitosis, what happens is a new cell wall starts to form in between those two cells. It's called the cell plate. It kind of grows, solidifies until it completely forms, splitting those two cells. And then cytokinesis completing the plant cell. It works a little bit differently. So, uh, yeah. so, to help with remembering the phases, I usually assign the first letter of each phase to mean something. So, interphase is like the in between phase when the cell is not divided. P, prophase, the cell's preparing to divide. Metaphase, middle. Chromosomes line up in the middle. Anaphase, they split apart from each other. Telophase, two, PWO, we have two cells are formed. Pair, middle, part of two. That helps. Again, just another little description here of what's going on. We just sort of bring it all together. So, the cell cycle, and in the S phase, the chromosomes copy themselves. So you have a single stranded chromosome copy to a two stranded one. The cell reaches the M phase for mitosis, starts off in prophase, where the chromatin lines up and forms actual chromosomes that you can see, those X's. The spindle starts to form, the nucleus disappears. In metaphase, the chromosomes align themselves down the middle of the cell, single file. In anaphase, that little central mirror that holds the two halves of a chromosome together splits, and the chromosome splits and gets pulled apart to opposite ends of the cell. Once they reach opposite ends of the cell, a new nuclear membrane starts to form around them. Other phase, and then the cell itself splits, forming two cells. Those two cells are genetically identical. They have the same DNA, same chromosomes, same genes. Mitosis produces identical cells. So this is an animation that kind of shows you what that might look like. 